to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'd like to make a few comments regarding some verses in that chapter. We're not going to read it, but we will definitely reference it. Beginning there in verse 17, we, we find the account of the rich young ruler. And he asks our Lord what he needs to do in order to be saved. What is he lacking? Well, Jesus tells him. And ultimately he tells him to give all that he had to the poor. Now verse 22 gives this rich young ruler's response. It says, And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. It is in this context that we arrive at verse 28. This is right after Jesus describing how difficult it is for those who would prefer to be rich in this life, and how difficult it would be for them to enter into heaven. Now verse 28, of course it's Peter, says, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all, and have followed thee. Look at this rich young ruler, and his response to needing to give everything away he had in order to follow Jesus. But look at us, Jesus. We have actually done that. We've given these things up. But then we see Jesus' response, verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren, and sisters and mothers, and children and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. Now, as we said, this is in contrast to the rich young ruler and his outlook towards life. And we see Jesus basically referencing John, or excuse me, Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 27, where he prescribes, if you wish to indeed follow after me, you need to hate your family. Now, the term there is not how we think of hate. It's love less. There's priorities in this life. Properly applying Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seeking God first. That comes before our fleshly families comes before everything else in this life. But Jesus is saying, everybody who has answered the gospel's call has given these things up. Peter, you're not any better than they are. But then verse 30, But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. Now that's not saying if you give $100 you're going to get thousands back. But think about what it's actually saying. If you give up everything that you hold dear physically and you indeed seek after God, the kingdom and his righteousness, you're going to be rewarded with things in this life. And it's these physical things. Now how can that be the, be the case? Well think about when you become a Christian what family now you're a part of. When that individual rises out of the watery grave of baptism that person is now a part of God's family. They're not a, well they're still a part of their earthly family but even so or more so Far better, they're part of God's family. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 47 through 50, it there says, Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them that told him, Who is my mother, 
and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand and toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So you see, whenever we obey the gospel, when we're truly converted, we're added to the church by our Savior, but we also join God's family. We're siblings with Christ, our older brother. So in that sense, we gain a hundredfold now in this time. Whenever we have difficult times, ideally we can rely on our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us out. Galatians 6.10 I think whenever I was at Fish Hatchery there for a while, we had a family there that had lost their house to a fire. And the wife had made her husband all these custom suits for his preaching. And they were quite pretty. As pretty as a suit can be, I guess. They lost every single one of them. They lost all their pictures, all their other physical possessions. And there's no way that they could ever have those replaced. But as a congregation of the Lord's people, guess what we did? We came together, we pulled our funds, and we gave them of our money. So they could attempt to replace some of those things. Build a house, or, you know, buy a house, either way. We take care of our own. When the hurricane hit not too long ago, many were affected. Many from this congregation went and helped. Whether it was demolish houses to get to the, the structure of the, the house to have a construction crew come in and, and rebuild. Or anything beyond that, taking care of the meals for these families. When we are added to the Lord's family, we gain mothers, sisters, brothers, and fathers. We even gain houses. Who's to say a hurricane doesn't hit this year? And some of us lose our houses now. I, th I think it very possible, very reasonable that there are many here that would offer their home up to our brothers and sisters here who need it. If the occasion arose. Uh, James chapter 1 verse 27. Part of undefiled religion is to care for the widows and the orphans. Um, I didn't have the worst childhood, but I certainly didn't have the best. But when I became a Christian, I gained a great family. And then whenever I married, I got another great family. Most of the time, people, when they talk about their in-laws, it's a derogatory sense. I don't have to worry about that. So I was doubly blessed. But along with all these different blessings... Again, there in verse 30, you have all these additions. It comes with persecutions. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. We are warned, we are promised that we will endure persecution. And quite frankly, that's because we're different. We are peculiar. The world does not like us. They might be friendly toward us, but when you start exposing their error... All of a sudden, they forget all the nice things that we have, might have done for them. And they become our enemy. And ultimately, they are our enemy. The only way to have them cease being our enemy is to teach them out of their wickedness and have them converted to the gospel of Christ. Being a part of this family provides for that last phrase. And in the world to come, eternal life. Now, obviously... If you're trying to describe eternal life, a place without time, it's impossible to describe that to people who are wedded to time. In the world to come, we're not going to inherit another earth as this planet is. But as far as our understanding goes, it's, it's meant to help us understand what heaven's going to be. It's another place for which we are going to dwell if we are indeed faithful to God. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Jesus is the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him. Now the opposite of that is if you don't obey him, you're not a recipient of this family. You're not a recipient 
of these mothers and sisters and brothers and children and fathers and lands and houses. And if you keep on that same path, you won't have to endure as much persecution, if any. However, you will not benefit and enjoy eternal life in the next world. Now, there's only one way to enter into this family. And as that, I guess it's considered a cliche, I don't keep up with that sort of thing, but the idea that blood is thicker than water. Realistically speaking, the water is how you contact the blood. Baptism is where we, where, metaphorically speaking, the blood of Christ contacts us. It cleanses away our sin. Washes it away. So in that sense, blood is thicker than water. The blood of Christ, the most precious blood that has ever been shed in this world. And he did that for each of us. So that we can be able to receive the blessings listed there in verse 30. This new family. Now certainly whenever we apply Galatians 6.10, we are to do good unto all men. So even the most ranked sinner is going to benefit from a Christian. Whether it be providing a meal, or ultimately, ideally, it's teaching them the gospel. But there's those daily needs that we all have. That maybe some folks are lacking. As Christians, we have the ability to supply their need. Take that opportunity. But fully, they will never be blessed as we are until they obey the gospel. The only way to enter into heaven, to be a recipient of that world to come, that is eternal life, is to be an obedient child of God. Not only being baptized for the remission of sins, but remaining faithful. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. I hope these thoughts have been useful to you. I know they are to me because it's nice to actually have a family that will care for you, be thoughtful or thinking of you, to have your best interest at mind, at heart, and then to actually carry those things out. But that's the nature of God's family. That's what we do as Christians. Now, if you're not a Christian, you will not benefit fully from those blessings. Why not become one this afternoon? However, if you are a member of that family, yet you've been acting unruly, you know, an unruly child gets disciplined if things are going correctly. Ask my son. <laughs> we have the opportunity this afternoon, if there is any sin in your life, why not take care of it tonight or this afternoon? So which of these two needs might be apply to you? Please make it known as together we stand and sing.